Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you all sorts of wonderful things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. You got some new releases for movies, so I'm going to talk about them in pre-critic. I got some flagship Friday. Uh, I have a flagship. I don't know why I said some, but I got a flagship Friday video for you guys as well. Uh, there's a lot of weather happening this week. Um, I think it's, uh, I see a lot of sleet on the ground, so um, get your coffee ready, because I got my coffee ready with a mug that's probably seven plus years old, and I'm ready to get this show on the road, so let's kick things off with a little bit of weather, and let's check it out. Uh, it is currently 30 degrees outside, your high is going to be 37, your low is going to be 30 degrees, your high is going to be 37, and by Saturday, pretty much going to be staying that way throughout the weekend, Sunday you can see patchy fog, and then mostly sunny for the rest of the day. And you can see some of the same thing uh, going into your Martin Luther King Day as well. So we do have some programs here as well that are going to be highlighting um, Martin Luther King Day. We do it at uh, St. Paul Lutheran Church. I'll get more on that a little bit later. Um, here's your snow report. This is from onthesnow.com. If you look up, you can see all the fresh powder that's been falling in some of your local ski resorts in the Montana region. Big Sky Resort had 20 inches in the last 72 hours. One, one inch of fresh powder. Bridger Bowl had five inches in the last 24 hours. It looks like it's going to be pretty sunny um, today as well. Uh, Blacktail Mountain Ski Area is had eight inches of fresh new snow. S snow Bowl had nine inches of fresh new snow. Whitefish had four inches. Showdown Montana had eight inches in the last 24 hours. Great Divide had seven. And Lost Trail, what's happening with you, buddy? Come on. Um, so Discovery Ski Area has four inches of fresh new powder this weekend with uh, 25 to 55 for the base and the height. Um, Maverick Mountain, you have about two inches of snow in the last 24 hours. Uh, Red Lodge didn't have any fresh powder in the last 24 hours, but it's still all good to go. Trenton Ski Pass area and Lost Trail Mountain P Ski area are those areas that the snow is not good enough for skiing, or snowboarding, or any kind of outdoor winter downslope um, fun. So just so you guys know, um, you can always call them or you can go to ondasnow.com for more information. And actually, they have a nice little links to cameras where you can actually see the view from them as well. So let's kick it off, and we got some news Missoula County elections are coming up, and uh, already so many people are already uh, wanting to uh, jump on that. So while some of you may be distracted by the upcoming election that involves around the House, uh, which involves all the House reps, because their term is two years, um, a third of the Senate, their term is six years, Missoula Sheriff, judges, and the county attorney will be up for election this year. Among the few, Jean Curtis will run again for a seat on county commissioners for another six-year term. She's been holding her seat for three full terms so far. Uh, actually, three terms thus far. Um, Sheriff T.J. McDermott will run for the second term. Kristen Papps will run for county attorney uh, for re-election. Three of the four district court judges positions that serve Missoula and Mineral Counties are up for election this year. Those six-year term seats are currently held by John Larson, Robert Dusty Deshaw, uh, Leslie Halligan, and all, all of whom filed for re-election. Um, no candidates filed Thursday for the job of County Superintendent of Schools, a post currently held by Aaron Lipke, Lipkind. Sorry. Um, primary elections in Missoula are usually considered the biggest elections for uh, county commissioners and sheriff as they are very uh, uh, left-leaning, uh, while judges and attorney must remain an open elections to avoid political influence on any like trials or any kind of cases and whatnot. But since we're in Missoula, it, it kind of seems obvious what political spectrum most people lean on. So let's move on to the state uh, before you uh, g go, hey, wait a minute, that's not necessarily true uh, because, you know, who knows? V okay, so a California woman admitted on Thursday that she helped supply meth in a conspiracy to distribute drugs in the Bakken oil fields up in the Montana, northern Dakota region. Claudia Norman, 57, of uh, Grover Beach, California, pleaded guilty to conspiracy to distribute meth during a hearing in U.S. District Court in Billings. A source of meth of, of co-conspirators Timothy Swoop of Sydney and uh, Keith Coffin of Santa Maria, California, who worked with uh, another person to pay Norman in return for meth. The conspiracy ran for about a year, starting in December 2015. Soup was sentenced to 13 years in prison, and Coffin was sentenced to 10 years in prison um, for their convictions in this case. Of course, more state news is going on here. Uh, chronic wasting disease spreads among uh, many of the northern western states. Montana Fish Wildlife Parks will have an update this Saturday during, uh, so that's tomorrow morning, during an outdoor meeting among 
Among them will include experts on the disease itself and dear management folks in terms of preventing a, da a data and uh, uh, preventing. Basically, they're trying to data mine um, from the hunters. They have given special tags for this hunting season. Season. So mule deer and white-tailed deer are, have been found to have um, chronic wasting disease, which is a degenerative um, zombie-like um, disease that uh, deteriorates the muscle and your brain tissue. Um, and uh, just interaction between the deer have caused the spread. Um, also, uh, from what um, many um, specialists believe, that um, they were able that the deer contracted from soil prions, which is like a, a protein bacterial infection type de deal that's actually pretty tough that uh, regardless of whether you freeze or cook or scorch the meat that you use to cook with the deer, um, <laughs> it can still spread the disease as well, no matter how, uh, much, how, how much you freeze it or how much you uh, burn it as well. So that's one of the things that they're going to be talking about, and it's quite the little epidemic because uh, I, um, I, I read also in... Um, uh, another uh, source um, from Canada is that they fed uh, some chronic waste and disease meat to some monkeys and they contracted it. So just be aware that this that this disease is kind of getting kind of crazy at this point. So they'll be talking about this um, at the uh, Redison Colonial Hotel at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning in Helena. So, of course, many other topics that are going to be discussed, which include most of the outdoor stuff, is the Citizens Climate Lobby, um, and they're going to be meeting on Tuesday, January 16th. Helena will meet uh, from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. at St. Paul United Methodist Church. Um, community Pond grant money is available, and the deadline is February 1st. So this is an uh, out, um, the kind of like this is an outdoor kind of uh, deal for uh, research and uh, forestry, and you can get a grant, and the deadline is February 1st. The Forest Service of Monta and Montana Discovery Foundation are co-hosting a Woods in Words short story contest, and you can submit your story to uh, Kathy uh, Bushnell at kbushnell at fs.fed.us. Or you can mail it to Helen Lewis and Clark National Forest. You can also look online for this at facebook.com slash HLCNF. Of course, they have categories for people who are under the age of 18 and over the age of 18. And your uh, short story contest must involve a um, short story. And also uh, on Valentine's Day is another short story contest that's happening here in the city of Missoula with $100 prizes for top prizes for writers between age groups. Uh, usually it's jumping between from young to old to uh, teens to young adults and all that stuff. And you can win about $100 for that. So that's happening at the Missoula Public Library until the end of, uh, until February 16th. Um, but I'm kind of, uh, kind of lingering on the news for a little bit longer than I usually do. Here's some national news. Um, the House has passed a bill reauthorizing a key foreign intelligence collection program with important tweak. It requires an FBI to get a warrant if it wants to view the contents of Americans' communications. Basically, this bill was originally meant to protect folks' national securities if they had any contact with the foreign groups in countries that are in conflict with the United States and their allies. So let's say you have family in Russia and you call Russia. You may be phone tapped by the FBI for talking about this. So bipartisan support for the privacy of U.S. citizens is the utmost concern, and this tweak in the bill would allow for a warrant if an individual or group is contacting groups that have ties to terrorist groups. Um, so if you're contacting them, they have to tell you that, okay, we're going to have to put a warrant on for this thing um, if we're going to be listening to your conversation. So Trump, um, before he knew the nature of the surveillance, put it to, into question about a biased intelligence agency out to get him and to protect Hillary. The U.S. intelligence law under which surveillance warrants are issued is different from Section 702, um, that law. So Section 702 is a big thing that's happening as well, so you should look it up yourself. Um, that law from the FIS um, Amendment Act addresses how U.S. spies collect information on foreign overseas. If the National Security Agency is monitoring a Russian spy within Russia and he gets a call from an American, Section 702 permits U.S. intelligence officers to continue listening without asking a judge for a warrant. So in a way, you, they can't follow the American who's calling the Russian, but they can follow the Russian, and the American who happens to call the Russian, so that's kind of like the whole idea is like one party non-consent spying. That's basically it. The practice of the U.S. government listening to Americans without a warrant remains controversial. The House voted on it but rejected a measure on Thursday, yesterday, that would have taken away some of the power th that intelligence agencies now enjoy. Section 102, 702 may face other challenges in the Senate. So 
I got this information from NPR.org. You can look that up yourself. It's very long and convoluted, like anything that's related to a bill. So I suggest you guys check that out as well if you want to learn more about you people listening to your phone calls. Um, if you're calling some family in um, your home countries and you have your f extended family there as well. So here's some new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. Um, when I come back, I'll be talking about some movies that are going to be coming out and how you should avoid them. Wyoming finished the statewide uh, inventory last year in terms of actually um, visiting the stands aerially in Kemmerer. That was the last field office they, they worked in. Uh, they did the aerial reconnaissance. Um, and so they at least have delineations across the state of Wyoming. Uh, they're still working on processing that data. Uh, but sometime next year, uh, they should have a comprehensive inventory. So Wyoming is, is uh, pretty far along um, in that. And then also um, their program is doing uh, some treatments as well. Um, they're doing treatments both out of the Kemmerer field office and out of the uh, Warland field office. Um, and it's mostly uh, density management, uh, hand treatments, mastication of uh, competing conifers with uh, the white bark pine. Uh, Wyoming is also uh, working on an interagency agreement with uh, the Coeur d'Alene um, Forest Service Nursery uh, to start uh, growing some seedlings. Uh, and they're going to—they're uh, targeting um, post-fire recovery um, as well as augmenting some natural regeneration. About was Linda Sexton from Bozeman, and uh, I—but I didn't see her book, uh, *Margaret of the Imperfections*. She's written some since. Yeah. until after we'd made our selections. We did get a little group of carpers who <laughs> preferred not to publish, but were angered that we didn't know about them. <laughs> preferred not just, just what means I, uh, they thought we'd be using, I, I'm not sure. Um, the, other thing, <laughs> the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, the question of including women in the anthology. Um, the last graduate class I uh, taught at Idaho was class in the history of the personal essay and the students complained that Virginia Woolf was the first female essayist in the anthology. Well, there's a problem there. You know, Dorothy Wordsworth's letters in the past and papers and so forth and I explained all this to them and how we could have a 90 credit MFA program. Uh, which they were not in favor of, I, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Andre, for that beautiful song. Um, Andre Floyd has been all around the world playing his special brand of original rock and blues and ballads. Andre has worked with such greats as Taj Mahal, Edgar Winter, Corky Siegel, to name a few. Not only has Andre performed for 42 of his 61 years, 
but Andre is also a renowned promoter of concerts and, pro and has produced over 30 CDs for other regional artists. Um, in short, Andre is the quintessential musician and businessman. <laughs> Currently in the studio, working on his fourth CD on his cell phone Tapas record label. Andre is currently touring and pleasing audiences all over the Northwest with his original brand of powerful blues and having fun. St. Paul Lutheran Church hosts a Martin Luther King Day celebration which kicks off around 5 p.m. on Monday at Karis Park and they march all the way back to the um, St. Paul Lutheran Church, which I believe is off of Main Street across the street from the library. So check that out. Uh, it happens every single year, and it's been going on for a lot of years here in the city of Missoula now. I don't know the exact numbers, but it, it's, been going along, uh, go, it's been going on as long as I've been alive. It's the last, like, I guess 30 years. <laughs> I'm not 30. But um, let's talk about some movies that are coming out. Um, another movie about a a talking animal that's cute and tropes and other uh, family fun great whatever um so anyways if you like cgi animals that can talk and go on adventures well <laughs> you smurf elvin and the chipmunk type family film is here in the form of this bear no not the country bears not that kind of bear paddington follows a children's book character come to life in this adventure where th the most accomplished um is a simple task with Hilarious results. Um, watch a movie like this, starring the lady who has sex with a creature from the Black Lagoon as the mother in this film. Uh, she's had a good year. She's had a lot of movies this year, honestly. Um, can't remember her name. And neither should you. Okay, the c uh, imagine if you have a chance to win money on your commute to work and you must solve this case before the movie ends. The commuter stars Liam Neeson, who who's easy commute to work is taken and he must untaken his train back before he can win money and prevent the takening of people's money and time to watch this film he's an old man in an action film let him act like a real actor not a gravelly voiced protagonist this is this uh, next movie is a lady named Mary and she's proud proud Mary is the movie in which a lady must fight proudness to reclaim her proud unlike okay I'm just gonna read the synopsis Mary is a hit woman. Okay, so it's a hit woman movie. Working for an organized crime family, of course, in Boston. Mm, yeah, love Boston. Mary is uh, completely turned around when she meets a young boy. Okay, there's always somebody young and um, of the opposite gender whose path is she crashes when a professional hit goes awry. Of course, so professional something that their job they're unable to do. And then something with the crime family is like, oh, now we're going to kill you for not killing. Sounds like every hit person movie ever um it was a routine toaster strudel when scott got burned and now he must go on a journey to the grocery store to reclaim his adulthood in by a book scott and the strudel coming soon so that's basically how anything can be turned into a movie but not everything can be turned into a movie but let's watch another movie that was created by the flagship program and this is the kids from hellgate high school in this high school, anything can happen. So you finally come, Tideki. I have destroyed your noble village. And now you felt the pain that I felt. And soon, the entire world will feel your pain. Zizek, oh, what have you done? You will never get away with this. You don't talk. Don't make me do this. For the sake of the whole world, Tadeki, you must win! Don't make me do this, Suzuko. You were always weak, Tadeki. Come at me with everything you've got if you have any desire to live. I have to win for the sake of the world. There's some fire in you. I like that. Pitiful fool. 
Wait, what's that? unbelievable. I'm not sure I can win this alone. Take my energy. Oh yeah, this. Use your last pathetic attempt to kill me in that game. I'm not done with this. My skill set uh, does not have the tag new, but it does contain this. The Sword of Destiny! Impossible! No one has ever used it! Destiny! Sword! No! Yeah, that's that's the movie. I, I completely forgot I made a cameo. The return of Scott's beard. Anyways, uh, <laughs> let's talk about some things that are happening with your city council. So it's time for city council camera. All right, this is going to be really quick. Uh, I only have one clip for you guys. Um, as a large group water system, Missoula Water requires an UA UCMR4 to collect samples from 29 wells, 24 entry points, and four distribution systems locations biannually. Sampling schedule has allowed for a collection to be spread over a three-year period starting in 2018. So basically, um, the federal government um, mandates uh, regu uh, regulating the water system by testing it's through the EPA, and the EPA requires that the sampling of 30 different chemicals. And here is the f current the the new superintendent for uh, Mountain Water Company. Uh, there's no more presidents. That's the kind of thing. It's on an own company. It's a uh, utility now. So the superintendent, um, Dennis Bowman, will talk about this. The background on this is that the fourth unregulated contaminant uh, monitoring rule, we call it the UCMR4, uh, was published in the Federal Reg uh, Register on December 20th, 2016, and requires monitoring for 30 chemical contaminants between the years 2018 and 2020 using analytical methods developed by the uh, Environmental Protection Agency and consensus organizations. This monitoring provides a basis for future regulatory action to protect public health. As a large groundwater system, Missoula Water is required under the UCMR4 to collect samples from 29 wells, 24 entry points, and four distribution system locations biannually. Our sampling uh, schedule has allowed for the collection to be spread out over a three-year period starting in 2018. Um, one question that come up in the past is that why don't we use our own labs? Why don't we use, uh, you know, the wastewater treatment labs and that? Um, EPA regulates and certifies certain labs throughout all of the United States that can turn around and perform these type of samples looking for specific chemicals in the water. So they certified the labs. We went ahead and contacted and got prices from three labs and checked references in all three labs. And Babcock was the top um, pick for us uh, for their location and the costs associated with doing these. So it would be nice if we could keep it local and, and uh, um, be able to use our own labs, but we can't. There's only about, that I can remember, about eight to 10 labs throughout the United States that can do this. All right, so that was uh, Dennis Bowman, and so uh, the city of Missoula approved this uh, for the use of 
Um, basically, all results of the study will be available in June of this year, and it will be ongoing since this will be a biannual deal. The total cost for this three year of testing is going to be $29,780, which is about $10,000 per year, and will be paid for by the Water Utility Fund. The city also talked about pump replacement, so look forward to longer meetings of Public Works as they incorporate Missoula's water utility amongst many of the public utilities here in the city of Missoula, like wastewater treatment plant. But of course, and with the new year, the Committee of the Whole had to appoint new people to committees. Throughout Wednesdays, many committee meetings like admin finance, landlord student planning, public safety and health, public works, like I just said, um, and the Committee of the Whole, we'll be talking about, it's kind of like a, a combined uh, committee, like committee of the whole is the whole idea, just like all it talks about kind of like oversees all the committees and when one committee becomes like, okay, so we need to really talk about this, you know, this meeting. So th that's why they have the committee of the whole as a, as a catalyst, as a uh, entry point for many other, so it can be put into committees. So yeah, it's, it's a committee for committees. Yeah, so yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's your city council report. If you're interested in finding out more about your local government, you can log on to ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a nice little website where you can um, learn about the city of Missoula and their government and how things work and how they're always looking for positions to be filled on the board. Some positions are paid for, but of course some positions are a nice little foothold if you're interested in getting into involved with Missoula government and politics as well. If you're interested in learning about my show and seeing some of the videos that you just saw here today, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, you made you write it out twice. You can go to the home page where you can see the most recent episode. Um, you can go to past videos. We can see past interviews and more. Um, you can also see um, some flagship Fridays movies and more and all this stuff like that. But if you want to learn more about MCAT, you go to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your resource for everything MCAT and Missoula in a broadcast sense. So MCAT uh, is gonna is uh, currently doing the um, Ballet Beyond Borders live stream. We uh, MCAT live streams any uh, public event that's happening here in the city of Missoula. The University of Montana has this live stream. A lot of things that are happening there. Um, but this time, uh, well, it's actually going to be live streamed from the University of Montana, ev even though it's a different organization that's renting out the Denison Theater for their ballet. Um, it's not a competition. They want to avoid it being a competition. The whole idea is they want to bring um, ballet from all over the world and dance to kind of exchange ideas and inspire the youth for dancing. So that's kind of like what Ballet Beyond Borders is. Um, and uh, hopefully, I might be able to show you guys a little taste of the live stream uh, again, like I showed you on Wednesday. Wednesday, that was a nice little live stream that I, uh, that we, I was able to attach on to. But I'll get to that probably towards the end of the show and see if I can do that as well. So I'll be constantly looking throughout. Um, I have another video for you guys. I made this just the other day. And it is, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. So without further ado, here's the premiere of Horror Lego.
That'll get uh, parents and kids banging on our doors for our Saturday drop-ins. <laughs> it was a shameless horror movie that plugs our Saturday drop-ins. Saturday drop-ins ev happens every Saturday from 1 to 5, $10 per kid. And our age range is roughly 8 to 14 years of age for anybody interested in learning stop animation, making some short films, kind of like what we ju just did there. So I'll be posting that online as well just to kind of promote MCAT Saturday drop-in. Um, but of course, uh, let's talk about some events that are happening here in the city of Missoula. We're kicking it off with uh, some uh, Missoula events. So first up, th starting this morning, is Create Your Own 90 Day Plan. The Law of Missoula is hosting a, um, without urgency, uh, it gets delayed or left incomplete. Planning 90 day cycles forces you to focus on key drivers of success in your business and provides healthy motivation to get more than more done in 12 weeks than most will get in a year. Join the ICF um, certified business coach, uh, Geraldine Carter, on this workshop where you, where you will walk away with your clarity and focus along with stepping stones and accountability that you need to turn your inspiration into a tangible growth. So nice thing that's happening now, uh, but it's also will probably be ongoing as well. So um, if you're um, interested, if you're if you have a kid that's interested in doing some uh, tumbling and doing some gymnastic stuff, Mismo Roots and Missoula Indoor Sports Arena will be doing um, all sorts of uh, tumbling and gymnastics from 9:30 to about 12, and also pretty much throughout the rest of the day. But that's most of their their young kid events. So that's a good way to get started for the kids physically, and also there's story time and tiny tales at Missoula Public Library starting at 10:30 a.m. for kids who are just learning to pick up books, and you want them to uh, uh, pick up healthy habits in terms of reading. So winter sidewalk sale starts at the Southgate Mall this morning, starting at 10 a.m. from January 12th to, um, to January 15th. Um, escape the cold weather and warm up your look. Get the most out of your holiday gift cards. Mall hours, of course, are, are, are I guess, are uh, subject to the sidewalk sale as well. So uh, there's a free silk screening demonstration at the Zootown Arts Community Center starting at noon today. Does your life lack a pattern or a picture? Have you collected a plain tops or scarves grown overwhelmed your wardrobe? Bring it out to Zach during the silk screen demonstration. Choose one of the designs and one of the artists will silk screen it for you for free. This is a totally uh, an opportunity for you to score some free silk screen designs courtesy of the Zuck artist. So it starts at 12 p.m. at the Zootown Arts. Get a plain shirt. Get it arti artified from the Zach for free. Um, if you're interested in some yarns and watercolor yourself, um, cribbage, I mean, yarns and watercolor will be at the Missoula Public Library. Yarns is a group where people gather around for a class to learn how to yarn, stitch, and crochet. Watercolor is a way for people to uh, learn painting with watercolor, but be aware that there is space limited there, but they do it every single week. Um, cribbage and Bridge at the Missoula Senior Center. If you like Cribbage and if you like Bridge, it's card games. Um, you go to Missoula Senior Center starting at 1230. Uh, teen Writers Group starts at 330 in the afternoon at the Missoula Public Library. Um, every Friday from 330 to uh, 530 p.m., the Missoula Public Library hosts teens and to improve their writing skills, and to uh, kind of get them going in terms of writing. Um, and of course, it's a good time to do it now because the, uh, there's a uh, story contest at the Missoula Public Library happening until the February 16th. Um, let's see, Indonesian Martial Arts is starting at 4.15 at the Barn Studio today, every class Tuesday and Friday for five to seven year olds. And it's a way to um, basically learn um, Indonesian Martial Arts, uh, Pencak um, Salat. Zach is also doing another thing. Uh, they're doing a gallery opening started at 5.30 p.m. tonight as well. It's called Anxiety Spells. Um, Nico Larson is a former art student at the University UMT um, after attending Rocky Mountain College and Arts and Design and then completed an internship artist, Lori Lynx Murphy. She moved from Denver, Colorado, to Missoula to continue, her, to continue pursuing her BFA. Her interests include exp uh, exploration through multimedia, uh, the da Dadaist ideology, witchcraft, and anti-logic, and coping mechanisms. If you are unable to attend, this will be open through their uh, Zach, through the Zach pretty much all week long. Um, and here are your Saturday, uh, some of your late night events for your you uh, late night Folks, Worldwide Cinema is happening at the Missoula Public Library. They uh, bring a movie from the Worldwide Cinema, and they uh, kind of show it starting at 7 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library. Um, late night events, uh, Dead Hipster presents I Love the 90s. If you like 90s music, um, go to the Badlander tonight. Uh, Dusk 
is a country music band. It's going to be the Sunrise Saloon. Gladys Friday is going to be the Union Club. They're a jam band, dancing band, so Union Club is a great place to dance. Uh, Tequila Mockingbird is going to be funk music at the VFW, uh, along with Aaron uh, Schneider and Semi uh, Precious. Uh, Lainey Lou and the Bird's Dog is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge tonight, and it's going to be some blue bluegrass music as well. That is all your Friday night events that are happening, but if you guys are interested in doing some things, you may want to go to bed a little bit early because Saturday morning at 7 a.m., Adventure Shuttles is doing a ski shuttle to Blacktail Mountain starting at 7 a.m., and uh, they have a return trips at 7.30 p.m. at the latest. Um, Adventure Shuttles is hosting... Um, th uh, Basically, shuttle. It's $20 registration fee, uh, so it's a, a round trip. And, of course, you must register to ride. You can go to mtshuttle.com. Um, look at the links and look for this winter excursion. Um, you can call them at 406-493-2345. So it's as easy as calling 493-2345. And there's only 11 seats available. And um, that's the first trip, so maybe you can call ahead and inquire about maybe going a, a little going up there a little bit later as well winter market at missoula senior center um if you guys are sad about the farmer's market going away winter market is continuing on at the missoula senior center um if you're interested in doing some outdoor activities and learning about the gps navigation basics so if you like going outside and you like going hiking and you plan on going to i don't know the bob marshall because a gps navigation basics at rei missoula is a good place where you know where you won't get lost and you won't die. Because <laughs> most people who go up the bomb marshal unprepared die. Um, GPS navigation, learn how to use a pocket size navigator to pinpoint your location, mark waypoints, and navigate your distant points. The instructor will review the uh, features to consider when choosing a receiver and introduce you some of the fun and practical application with using, using a GPS unit. Um, intro into ice fishing clinic. Uh, Cabela's Missoula is doing a intro to in into ice fishing. Ice fishing can can be really easy. Come into Cabela's and let's show you how the proper equipment and techniques to make this fun winter sport and how you can catch the perfect trophy fish at 11 a.m. Jennifer Finley Poetry Winter Storytelling at Traver's Les Traveler's Rest State Park starting at 11 a.m. Native American poet Jennifer Finley will share her work, including readings of from her newest book, My Hands Have Vertigo. I feel, and of course, she feels her way through the world with words. Finley says it's, a, it's how she touches everything, how she experiences everything, and how she understands everything is what words, that's what means to be a poet to Jennifer Finley. Icy Isotope Races, Missoula Insectarium, is, uh, is a great place to become an anthropologist and help them conduct experiments on effects winter temperatures have on anthropods, and you'll work with live iso isopods, and more commonly known as roly-polies. And you can stop in between 12 and 2 p.m., predator feeding at 1 p.m., so if you want to see them, some bugs munching on some other bugs, you can watch the predator feeding at 1 p.m. Um, ending your day. Um, open house at the Maker's Space, Missoula Public Library, starting at 3 p.m. Um, and this is a great way to um, do some 3D printing, do some wonderful things with that. And that's from 3 to 6 p.m. Uh, that's basically what, basically everything is kind of up and stops right there and then, then and there on Saturday. But if you're interested in doing some late night events, you can skip ahead to Movie Cult at the Roxy Wayne's World. So if you like Wayne's World, Wayne's World is, the, is a, the movie for you. You get to watch it in a theater at the Roxy. 60s, 70s, Disco Dance Party is going to be at the Lolo Hot Springs. Absolutely with... Uh, Chris Moon is going to be at the Badlander. Karaoke is going to be at the VFW. Um, the Shiver is going to be at the Union Club. The Country Boogie Boys Country Music is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. And Josh Farmer Band is going to wrap up your weekend at the Top Hat Lounge with some funk music. So enjoy all these wonderful events and more by going to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net is your source for everything Missoula. If you want to know what's going on in Missoula, go to MissoulaEvents.net. Um, what else do I have for you guys? Do I have anything else I want to kind of show you guys? But I'm pretty much wrapped up. I showed you all the videos I was going to show you guys. I do want to try to at least see if there's a live stream going on right now. So I will check and see. Just just bear with me. I'm just tr trying to see if we're going to get a live stream going on here. Um, MCAT is live streaming Ballet Beyond Borders. And uh, you go to MCAT.org. If you go to MCAT.org and you go to the uh, local live page, so MCAT.org, and you click on local live, and you can see 
uh, any kind of live video that will pop up here, which will hopefully be pretty soon. But then, I don't know, it happens. We're just getting things started. So, um, yeah, that pretty much does it for everything Missoula. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Things are going to be, uh, s uh, the sun's going to be shining, but you might have some patchy fogs throughout the week. But um, just enjoy it. Um, it'll be a good weekend. It's not going to be too cold. It'll be in the 30s, uh, highs into the 37. We might even see 40 degree uh, weather happening this weekend as well because the sun will be shining. So without further ado, I have a nice little music ending for you guys as well. Uh, actually, nice is subjective since I made this music myself. So thanks for joining me and here's some music. <laughs> Thank you.